Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I'm sharing how I made 15 cards using the Crafty Courtyard Kit called Freezing Season and the Puppy Love Stamp Set, which are both subscription products from Pink and Maine. And these are from December of 2021. I'm also using Kendra's Card Challenge number five. Now, if you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create 15 cards using just six sheets of six by six pattern paper and you use other card stock and supplies, of course, but you'll use the cutting templates and card sketches that I provide in a free PDF download that's available on my website at cardsbykendra.com. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. And I'll explain more about the challenge as we go along, but before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. So this is the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit. It's called Freezing Season, like I mentioned before, and it was from December of 2021. I'll quickly show you what comes in it. It's got this see-through mesh zippered pouch, which is great for storing all of your crafty goodies. Uh, the card insert shows the contents of the kit along with the color palette theme, which is great for matching up your card stock. Two 6x6 holographic papers, some glitter enamel dots, and some matching sequins this embossing folder here called Quatrefoil and it's got this cute little collector's button with the penguin on it and then here's the stamp set and matching dies that has these adorable little penguins along with five different sentiments plus three different snowflakes and what I like about these smaller dies here is that there's some extra metal on them so you can have something to attach your tape to to help hold it in place when you run it through your die cut machine plus this stencil here with the snowflake pattern that you'll see on the paper here in just a second. And this is the six by six paper pad. These sheets are double sided and it comes with 24 sheets, two of each design. So there's this tiny polka dot pattern that comes in four different colors. And then there's this flowery snowflake pattern. Then there's a few sheets of this colorful splotches pattern. I don't really know what to call it. And then here's more of that snowflake pattern. And then there's patterns on the other side the smaller version of that snowflake pattern and then a few sheets of some paint swatches the diagonal stripe pattern chevron pattern some plaids another stripe sheet some hearts and a couple of other plaid patterns plus it comes with some matching card stock there's a mint green piece here that has embossed dots on it even though it's hard to see on camera it has a sheet of white glitter paper and a sheet of purple glitter paper and some lime green lime green and then two sheets of the heavyweight white or ice rink cardstock i just love the crafty courtyard kits from pink and main all of the stuff coordinates so well and all of my cards turn out really cute when i use them so here are the cutting templates that are included in the pdf file that's available for download in my introduction video for challenge five I show how to cut the papers using these cutting guides and I'll link that video above and in this description box below if you want to check that out after you're done watching this video. But here are the six papers that I picked to use for this challenge. I made sure that at least one side of the double sided paper matched what it would be paired with by looking at the card sketches and they are color coded so it's easier to see what pieces go where. But I'll show you both sides of what I've assigned for papers A through F. But it is best to use non-directional paper so you don't have to worry if the pattern will be facing a certain way when you put these together. Now for paper E, I use the heart pattern and I know I want to use that for card sketch 10. So I'll just have to pay close attention to how I cut this piece. Once you assign your papers, you want to select matching colored cardstock for the layers and make 15 A2 size card bases. Then you'll want to cut the six papers using the cutting templates and sort each piece by sketch number. I like to use cellophane bags so I can see what I'm working with. And then you'll cut the layers needed for each card sketch using matching colored cardstock. Now, once you have that done, then you can decide how you want to decorate each card using either stamps, die cuts, ephemera, or whatever you have. And most of all, have fun. So all of those steps that I just mentioned, 
I did all that off camera. So now I have everything ready to go to put together. And so I'm going to share the process with you. So in addition to the stamp set that came in the Crafty Courtyard kit, I'm also using these Love from Lizzie peel off stickers in the teal and raspberry colors to help embellish the cards. And I'll be using the December stamp of the month stamp set called Puppy Love, which is super cute. And this is also one of the subscriptions. This is the stamp of the month. So this uh, particular stamp set has these adorable little puppy images along with a little bone, a ball, a thought bubble, some hearts. But I'm also going to be using the sentiment stamp set from Pink and Main because I needed some other types of cards for this particular set. And I just love this stamp set because it has such a variety of sentiments. It's probably one of my most used stamp sets of all time because these sayings fit inside circles and squares and other types of shapes. And I like to use those on my card sketches. So now I'm going to show the process of putting together each of the cards. And I'm going to display the card sketch in the top left hand corner so you can see it. For this first one here, I used the Puppy Love stamp set. All of the images have already been colored using Copic markers and cut out using my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. I did not purchase the matching die set that went with this Puppy Love set. But you'll see me use this Scotch Advanced Tape Glider or ATG gun, I guess is what it's called for the very first time. And I just, you'll see me switch over to liquid glue. My mom gave it to me and I never used it and I thought I'd give it a try. I'm not used to it at all. And I was having a little bit of trouble with getting it to come out smoothly. So you'll see that I switch over um, and I don't really use it for the rest, of the, the rest of the video. But I also wanted to mention that I used some paper scraps to add to the backs of some of the pieces on these cards as I'm making them. So that they're level on the card. But for most of the cards I use some Nuvo Crystal Drops in Morning Dew because it dries clear and it just gives a little bit of shine. And I also used some Stickles Glitter Glue in Ice Glaze and that just adds a little touch of glitter. So I won't be putting that up on the screen each time, but I do pretty much use those on all of the cards. You'll also see me using those glitter enamel dots that came in the kit. I'll use some of the sequins and then some matching bows. Um, I've used tape runners in the past with making my cards, but um, I quit using those because some of the cards came apart over time, but it could be because it was a cheap brand, um, but it could also be the humidity here in Florida. I'm not really sure, but I'm curious, has anybody else had this problem? If so, let me know in the comments because I, I used to use the tape runners all the time, but because of that, I just decided to switch to liquid glue. And I thought I'd give this ATG gun a try, but yeah, I've just got to practice more apparently because I was having some, <laughs> I was having some issues. But I'm curious if that glue from the ATG gun will do the same thing if the cards will come apart. So if you have any tips to share, please let me know. Now, I don't plan on talking the whole time while I'm showing you this process. But there are a couple of tips that I wanted to mention before um, I turn on some music. You may have noticed because some of the layers I have used the mat to cut out the circles or ovals or whatever type of shape that's needed since it's going to be hidden behind the pattern paper. And also for card sketch four, um, I did show how I cut out the little fishtail banners. So if you don't have a die or a punch where you can cut these out, the easiest way to do this with scissors is to slightly fold the piece so that you can find the center and then cut a little slit right in the middle and then cut from each corner at a diagonal to the top of that slit. Now you don't want to fold it so that it creases the paper and you might be able to eyeball it better, but it's strictly up to you. But as I mentioned in my introduction video, because there's so many different patterns on Card Sketch 4, if you find that some of those pieces don't match or work well together, you can either eliminate them or replace the pieces with colored cardstock. The sketches are just the starting point. Now with this card challenge, you basically cut up the papers following the cutting guides, and then you put them together following the sketches, and you decorate them however you want. 
So Challenge 5 runs from January 1st to March 31st of 2022. And to enter, all you need to do is post pictures of your card creations on either Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5 so that I can find your photos at the end of the quarter. And you'll have a chance to win one of eight prizes, which I'll talk more about toward the end of the video. Now, I really love creating these card challenges. It's like a big puzzle. And I also enjoy putting all the pieces together. I found that I like using double-sided paper best so that I'll have more options when I start matching up the papers. But if your paper pad has 24 sheets of paper and you make 15 cards with just six sheets, you really could make 60 cards from one paper pad using this challenge, which is pretty cool. But sometimes the papers just don't go together. So if you find that that's happening with the papers that you've selected, you can always cut other patterns in your paper pad using the cutting templates so that they do match. And then you'll have more options. Plus, you can make additional cards with the scraps. A few more things that I want to mention. If you're on Instagram, make sure to follow me at Cards by Kendra. I'm doing a big giveaway right now until January 31st of 2021. I just recently reached 1,500 subscribers here on YouTube, and I'm super close to having 1,500 followers on Instagram. So to celebrate and give back to all of my supporters, I'm giving away a crafty goodie bag full of card making supplies that's valued at over $150, and it includes three stamp sets, five die sets, some stays on ink, some Copic markers, stencils, shaker pouches, embossing folder, tweezers, a paper pad, embellishments just a bunch of stuff so all you have to do to enter the the giveaway is like the post which i'll link in the description box below follow me and comment and tag your friends and then for additional entries you can also share my post in your stories and make sure you tag me so i hope you'll check out my instagram and enter to win that giveaway as I mentioned before, you can have a chance to win one of eight prizes from our amazing sponsors if you enter card challenge number five. The prizes for this challenge include a $20 gift certificate to Cat Scrappiness, a $25 gift certificate to Not Too Shabby Shop, a $25 prize pack from Pink and Main, a $20 gift certificate to TLC Designs, a $50 gift voucher to Whimsy Stamps and a $25 gift certificate to This Calls for Confetti, which is a brand new company recently started by my friend Lisa Mensing, where she creates beautiful confetti and sequin blends to use for shaker cards and embellishments. I'll put a link to each of the sponsor's stores in the description box below. I'd love for you to check them out and see what all they have to offer. There's so many amazing companies out there and if you're anything like me i love finding new places to shop online for crafty goodies plus there's a couple of additional prizes that i'm donating as well so i'll be giving away an echo park prize pack valued at over 25 dollars which will include a paper pad and also another 25 dollars prize pack with products from simon says stamp this quarterly card challenge or contest is open to card makers worldwide and you don't have to use any particular company's products to enter. You can just use what you have in your stash. Plus you can enter up to three times per quarter. Now, if you are on Facebook, be sure to join the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group so that you can post your entries there and also see what others have created with the sketches. Plus you can ask questions and find links to other videos with tips and tricks and some other card making inspirations. So if you're on Instagram, if you want to tag me in your post along with the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5, I will share your post in my stories. Now, if you have a YouTube channel and you post a video of your creations on YouTube, you'll get an extra entry into the contest. I know it takes a lot of work to create and edit YouTube videos, so I thought I'd give an extra chance to win something for all the extra efforts. Just please make sure that you use that hashtag in your title or tagline so I can locate it. And then also share the link in our Facebook group so that other members can see your video. Now, if you post your creations on your blog, please feel free to share links to your blog posts as well in that group. But also, please post a separate photo of all your cards either on Facebook or Instagram. So at the end of the quarter, I'll be able to easily show showcase your cards without having to leave those platforms. Now, I do use the hashtag to locate all entries, 
So that's the most important part to make sure you're entered into the contest. Also, if you're only on Instagram, make sure you follow me so that I can follow you back. Because if your account is set to private, I won't be able to see your posts, even if you use the hashtag, if I'm not following you. So if you have any crafty friends who might like to do this challenge, please feel free to share it. This is a, a lot of fun. And it looks like I'm almost finished with all of my cards here. And I've pretty much talked the whole time. I'm sorry. So if you were looking forward to music, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean to talk this much. But I did have a lot to share and some, you know, tips and tricks and important details about the challenge. So anyway, but what I love most about this challenge is that when I'm finished making all the cards, I have a great set of cards that coordinate. Now, I like to give coordinating sets of cards away as Christmas gifts to my friends and family each year. And this is a great way to get those cards made. And sometimes I will sell variety packs on my Etsy store too. I started my Etsy store a couple years ago and I haven't updated it in a long time until recently. It is called Papercraft Hut if you want to do a search for it and check that out. I will put a link in the description box. But um, if you're new to my channel and you're not familiar with me and what I do for my day job, I am a high school business and technology teacher. I've been a teacher for seven years and before that I had my own online craft business. And I'll show, share more about that in my next video. So um, make sure you stay tuned. But I do have a lot of exciting videos in the works coming up and I'll tell you a little bit about those. I have a collaboration video coming up soon with my friend Sierra from Sierra T Designs where we're going to share projects that we made with products from the Simon Says Stamp Mystery Boxes. And then another video that I'm working on, I bought some loved theme supplies from Queen & Company. So I'm creating a set of cards using those with Challenge 5 for Valentine's Day. And I'm also going to be sharing more Valentine's Day cards using the Not Too Shabby Sweet Valentine Wishes paper pad and ephemera that I just got in the mail yesterday. So it's super adorable and I'm pretty excited about sharing those with you in the next few weeks. Now, over the past year, I have purchased a ton of supplies, many that I haven't even used. So I do plan on doing a big D stash here on my YouTube channel as well. So stay tuned if that's something that you'd be interested in. So here are all 15 cards that I made using the December 2021 subscription products from Pink and Main. I think these turned out super cute. But I can't decide which one is my favorite. Let me know in the comments below which one you like best. I'd also love to know what types of videos you enjoy watching the most. Do you like watching me make the cards or do you prefer shorter videos where I just showcase the cards that I already made? Also, let me know if there are any techniques that you'd like for me to do a video on. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok for more card making inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful crafty day.